MPs today urge Britons and the police to wear their poppies with pride and in solidarity with Royal British Legion volunteers amid intimidation and threats of violence. The plea comes as poppy appeals vanished from public spaces after activists surrounded poppy sellers and a war veteran was even punched in the face while fundraising. To discuss this, I'm joined by Professor of Politics at the University of Buckingham, Eric Kaufman. Eric, very good evening. Welcome to the Independent Republic of Mike Graham. Great to be here, Mike. Good to see you. Um, there's a lot of questions there in that uh, sort of opening monologue and, and probably um, we should begin, I suppose, with, with the first one. Why do you think that Britain has become such a divided nation as it currently seems to be? Well, I mean, I think that the, the context of this is the rising salience of the culture wars, which is really being driven by what I would call the rise of cultural socialism yeah. or wokeness. Mm. And that is being driven in schools and universities. And what that's about is equal outcomes for minority groups and also hypersensitivity to the feelings of minority groups. And that sort of means that something like the poppy even, these commemorations where there isn't equal representation in the past, clearly most people who were fighting in the wars were white, mm. that is seen somehow as therefore not equal or, or somehow off-putting to minority communities. Mm. And for the identity left, they're going to take the side of minority sensitivity. And so this then becomes a division. Yes, it does. Because also most of the people that were fighting uh, on the opposite side, certainly in the Second World War and the First World War, were also largely white, weren't they? I mean, there was wars all over the world, obviously, but, but by and large, the fighting right. was going on um, in, you know, white society in Western Europe uh, and the Far East as well. But, but that was basically it. Well, exactly. But if you look at everything through a racial lens of oppressor and oppressed, yeah. then you racialize everything. Yeah. And suddenly, these are a bunch of dead white males that are somehow not representative of modern multicultural mm. society. So we're having the same debate in Canada as acrimonious. Um, the poppy becomes a symbol. It's no longer possible. When I was growing up in, in Canada, for example, we at school, there'd be a whole uh, ba bucket full of poppies. Yeah. It was a festive occasion. Right. It was on the PA system. Right. And now that I just think that's become much more divisive. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I see a lot fewer people wearing poppies now than I used to. And we used to have the, the conversations years ago about um, you know, whether you should wear a white poppy, which was a poppy for peace, whether there could be other colours that you could wear. But whatever the, the colour was, you were still kind of commemorating the people whose lives were lost in these conflicts. You know, you could you can argue that the conflict was wrong or that things were done that were wrong, but this is ostensibly about remembering family members, you know, friends, colleagues, people who have, have fallen, who went to war and never came home. Right. I mean, and, and of course, these become symbols in various cultural conflicts. I mean, obviously, there is this march, pro-Palestine march planned this weekend on yeah. the same Sunday as Remembrance Day. So, of course, there's going to be a clash. But, you know, Northern Ireland, clearly, it fought, runs on the Protestant-Catholic divide, whether you were a poppy or not. And I just think we're now, because of the culture war, that kind of broadly cultural left versus cultural conservative divide is structuring whether you were a poppy yeah. here and in other Western countries. I mean, it's been striking. I think a lot of people have picked up on this, that up to now, we've had four of these pro-Palestinian marches. Right. Many of them are absolutely full of students and, and young people, you know. And there seems to be almost an age divide that, you know, older people want to uh, commemorate the Remembrance, Remembrance Weekend and they want to have the two minutes of silence. But I get a sense that an awful lot of the people on that pro-Palestinian march couldn't care less about two minutes silence on Saturday at 11 o'clock, which is what we're supposed to do. Um, and a lot of people are worried that that is a time when there might be disruption. The Metropolitan Police have put out um, a, a statement tonight saying that they're going to be putting kind of checkpoints around the cenotaph and they're going to try and make sure that there isn't a problem, there isn't a clash. But, I mean, the fact that they even have to do that is a worry, isn't it? Oh, it is a worry, but again, if you look at everything through this oppressor-oppressed framework, and of course, young people are a lot more woke. I mean, we know it in surveys. Totally. If you look at a, even a question like, you know, is Britain a racist country? Right. Six in 10 um, people 18 to 25 in this country would say yes, mm. compared to less than 25% for the over 50s. So that gives us a sense of where this younger generation is coming from. This is in their school, this mm. is in the social media. They're being socialized differently, right. not in the traditions that we were brought up in. And they're learning not from history books, it would seem. They're learning from TikTok or they're learning from something that they've seen on the internet. Because we've got uh, some examples here of what some of these young people have been saying when they were asked actually about what they think about the situation in the Middle East. Have a look at this. Hamas are, their class is a, a prescribed terrorist organization. Do you think the UK has made the wrong decision? Of course. It's not Hamas the terrorist. It's America the terrorist. No, and the Israel is terrorist, not Hamas. In the UK, uh, Hamas are a prescribed terrorist organization. Do you think the government has made the right or the wrong decision in doing that? 
Um, well, it's controversial, but I think Hamas are freedom fighters. On the 7th of October, when Hamas invaded Israel, what was your initial reaction to that? To, honestly, it showed signs, this it was resistance against the occupation, against the Palestinians. Honestly, it was a beacon of hope for me. It was not, it was, to me, it was them fighting back and showing resistance. I think the fact that everyone ran with the 40 beheaded baby stories without any, any ounce of verification, any ounce of integrity is disgusting. So that's disgusting, but the uh, attack by Hamas is not disgusting. <laughs> These are uh, British citizens who were interviewed on the streets of London, by the way, uh, Eric, and they're clearly of the opinion that Hamas are freedom fighters, uh, that Hamas are a beacon of hope. You know, so when we hear the police uh, and the police chief, particularly Sir Mark Rowley, saying, oh, there's no evidence to suggest that, you know, anybody on these marches is going to cause any trouble, uh, it doesn't reach the threshold for us to stop it, we must allow freedom of speech. I mean, I, I can't quite believe my ears when I hear that. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of brainwashing involved there, but I, I do want to say that I'd rather ha they have their free speech than be banned, but I think we can be very critical mm. of their endorsement of terrorism. Um, I think there are really two actors here, I mean, you've got the... Muslim, within the Muslim community, a significant number of people who are on the Palestinian side and even on the radical Islam, Islamist side. Mm. Now, many are more moderate in their views. Um, and then you've got the, the sort of white woke left who are sort of fellow travelers. Yes. And that's, I mean, in a way, the first is has always they're been there. They're almost worse, aren't they? It's always they're, been there. They're, they're kind of like converted smokers who've given up. Right, you know? right. But but if the second group who sort of are taking the side of this group, it's all because it's slotted into that racial oppressor versus racial oppressed, yeah. colonizer versus colonized yeah. paradigm, and everything's seen through that lens. Right. And seeing it through that lens, I, is this a very, do you think it's a very London-centric thing? Because I think sometimes that we sit in London and we become slightly obsessed with the culture wars in London, which is a very different beast, if you like, to the rest of the nation. I'm not sure about that, actually. I think you've got plenty of, of sort of woke white leftists outside of London, mm. and we have the same issue in other countries like Canada, I was just right. mentioning. I think this is sort of programming that comes in through schools and media, regardless of where you live. It's just that the, the critical mass of, you'll get a higher critical mass of, say, Muslims within London than you would, say, in the countryside. Yes.